What if I told you your anxiety, chronic fatigue, and this weird sensation of feeling tired but wired are all caused by one mineral that until now you thought was harmless? And what if I told you that having too much of this mineral in the body, especially in the brain, is actually a silent epidemic that affects millions without them knowing? I know this all sounds like the introduction to some weird health conspiracy video, but please hear me out, because this was the missing puzzle piece to all my symptoms and mental issues, and has the potential to completely change your outlook on vitamins, minerals, and dieting in general. Copper toxicity, sometimes also called copper overload, is one of the most important mineral imbalances in nutrition, and treating it can change your life. In this video, I want to explain what copper toxicity is, its many symptoms, and why it still flies under the radar of so many nutritionists and practitioners, even though it affects millions of people. First things first, what exactly is copper toxicity? Copper is an essential trace element with several important functions, such as your body's energy system, to grow connective tissue and to neutralize bacteria and infections. But when you are exposed to too much copper that also isn't bound to any carrier proteins, its many benefits reverse and it acts like a toxic metal in the body. If your body then isn't able to get rid of this excess copper, it will build up over time in places where it's not supposed to be, at least not in such high quantities. First in your liver, then in your muscles, and then in your brain, where it completely throws off your neurotransmitters and biochemistry. The resulting symptoms can range from cognitive issues to constant anger and anxiety and chronic fatigue. Now, before I say more about any of the symptoms of copper toxicity, why is this even a problem? Where are we getting all that copper from? The most likely reason is the vast increase in copper exposure when compared to, let's say, 100 years ago. Environmental factors include copper plumbing, copper use in agriculture, this includes organic agriculture, which often uses copper sulfate as a pesticide, and copper IUDs. Foods high in copper include grains, chocolate, avocado, as well as nuts and seeds, which means diets high in these foods, such as vegetarian and vegan diets, also put you at risk of higher than ideal intake. One of the most problematic kinds of copper exposure is actually from tap water, which George Brewer, a medical professor from the University of Michigan, explains as follows. A rabbit model of Alzheimer's disease found that the addition of only 0.12 parts per million copper to the drinking water greatly enhanced cognitive decline. For context, I point out that the EPA in the US allows for 1.3 parts per million copper in human drinking water, over 10 times that which was found toxic in animal models. It is shocking that such small amounts of copper in drinking water should be so toxic. Now, at this point, I should say that current medicine only recognizes a genetic condition known as Wilson's disease as the cause of copper toxicity, not chronic overexposure. So if you have a medical background or have never heard of copper toxicity before, you're probably very skeptical, as you should be. I know I was too, and all I ask of you is to hear me out, especially if you yourself suffer from the common symptoms, such as chronic fatigue, hormonal problems or anxiety. It was my personal breakthrough and it could be yours as well. Besides taking in too much copper over long periods of time, there are several other factors that put you at risk of developing copper toxicity. The most important is stress. You see, in situations of stress, the body's natural response is to throw out calming minerals such as zinc and magnesium and to retain stimulating minerals such as copper. This is done to rev up your metabolism and put you in the famous fight or flight mode. When it happens every once in a while, the process usually works fine. But when you're under constant stress, you can develop a deficiency of zinc and magnesium while at the same time accumulating copper. The result of that is the feeling of being tired but wired, where you're drained of energy but your mind is constantly racing and cannot calm down, even when there are no immediate stressors around. So if you are sensitive to stress, chances are you already have a large amount of free copper in your body or are at high risk of it. Please also know that copper toxicity is more common among women than men. 
The reason is their higher estrogen levels. Estrogen and copper are closely linked, just as testosterone and zinc are closely linked. When one rises, so does the other, which means women naturally have a higher amount of copper in their body. It plays an important role in pregnancy and is the reason most prenatal supplements contain copper. Having more copper to begin with puts women at a higher risk of developing copper toxicity, especially when they're also on the pill or have a copper IUD. That said, men can also become copper toxic, and I'm the best example of this. After years of looking for solutions for my elevated estrogen and gynecomastia, it was only when I started focusing on copper that I saw progress. Third are vegetarians and vegans, which I already mentioned before. That's because such diets are high in copper and low in zinc, which is the main copper antagonist. A very common occurrence you might have even noticed yourself among copper toxic vegans is that they feel great the first few years on the new diet, after which they crash and lose all their energy. This is a very clear sign of copper toxicity. And the last group of people at a high risk are those with pyroluria. I have a video explaining what exactly pyroluria is, but it leads to chronic zinc and vitamin B6 deficiency, both of which can help keep copper under control. So the more deficient you are of them, the more easily copper can build up in the tissue. Okay, now that you know what causes copper toxicity and who is most at risk, what actually happens when you have it, and why is one mineral connected to all these different symptoms from low energy to brain fog and racing thoughts and anxiety? Let's start with the most common symptom, which is low energy and chronic fatigue. Functioning copper is actually crucial to our body's energy system because without it, iron cannot be loaded onto carrier proteins for transport throughout the body. As you probably know, without iron, your body's energy system basically breaks down. As confusing as it might sound, when you're copper toxic, you have too much copper in the body, but most of it cannot be used properly. So you can actually also develop symptoms of a copper blood deficiency. More on this in a second. Next, what about racing thoughts and anxiety? Like I said before, at some point, your body will store the excess copper in the brain, where it influences neurotransmitters that are critical for mood and mental health. The result is an increased conversion of dopamine to adrenaline and noradrenaline. More adrenaline means your fight or flight response is constantly triggered. Like I said before, the best description of this is feeling tired but wired or feeling chased all the time, even when you're resting, which is a clear sign of adrenaline dominance. If all that wasn't enough, unbound copper is also known to oxidize serotonin and we all know what happens when you have low serotonin levels in the brain. Lastly, and this topic actually deserves a video on its own, copper toxicity leads to hormonal imbalances because it retains estrogen and actively lowers testosterone. In women, you often find heavy periods, moodiness, and even things like a higher risk of endometriosis. In men, it can mean estrogen dominance, gynecomastia, which I had, and low libido. Other common symptoms are headaches, skin problems, and cold hand and feet, which relate to copper's ability to suppress other vital nutrients, such as iron, zinc, and magnesium. Now, if at this point you're thinking, well, this guy's just naming all possible symptoms under the sun, you are completely right. Copper toxicity is different in everyone, and so are the symptoms. It's basically a mild form of Wilson's disease, which can also have mental, physical, and hormonal symptoms all at once. Of course, this then takes me to the next question, which is, if copper toxicity is such a big problem, why is no one talking about it? Why are most nutritionists completely unaware of this problem? The simple answer is improper nutrient testing. Most practitioners that test for vitamins and minerals only work with blood tests. But blood tests are terrible for spotting copper toxicity because the excess copper is found in the tissue, not the blood. Like I said before, the copper overload in your organs also often comes with a deficiency in the blood. My first blood test was the perfect example of this, and it showed a copper deficiency, after which I was told to supplement copper. But this would have made my symptoms a lot worse, and I'm glad I didn't. What you need instead is a test that is more representative of what's going on in the body, specifically the tissue. My preferred test is a hair analysis, where you send in a hair sample that is then burned 
after which the remaining minerals are analyzed. I have a video on how to cut your hair, how to send it in, and which labs to use. So if you also want to get a hair analysis, please watch that video first. Practitioners who work with hair analysis and also know how to correctly interpret them are few and far between. But throughout my research over the last couple of years, I was able to find the foremost expert in this field, and working with them literally changed my life. That brings me to the end of this video, and hopefully I piqued your interest in copper toxicity. I know all this can sound a little too simple at first. One mineral that causes all these problems cannot be true, I know. All I can tell you is that it was the breakthrough in my personal health journey, and I wish I had found it earlier. That's why I made this video, because it would have saved me months, if not years, of research, confusion, and symptoms. Working on lowering the copper in your tissue and making it bioavailable in the blood again takes time. And online you will find a bunch of different programs on how to do it correctly. Famous ones include the Walsh Protocol, the Root Cause Protocol, and Mineral Balancing. I have video reviews on all of them, so if you don't know where to start, make sure to watch them first. As you will see, fixing your copper issues is just one piece of the overall puzzle of optimizing your nutrition to overcome things such as chronic fatigue, hormonal issues, and mental problems. This all is a very deep rabbit hole, and I record my videos to help you navigate all the conflicting advice.